I was surprised by Xbox announcement that there's not going to be any exclusives for the first year. Why would you say that? That's they said there was going to be no exclusives yeah, like, for the first year. Are you guys, very separate story. do you guys think that maybe they weren't originally going to release a console this year and they didn't decide that that was the plan until PlayStation released all of that random information on Wire? What was it, Mark? Carney. Mark Cerny. Sir, I was actually trying to do it correctly that time. <laughs> oh, my God. So embarrassing. Uh, uh, do, you, like, do you guys think that maybe, and I, I, this is a little bullish of me to think that they would change their entire structure of their marketing campaign around one article in a magazine, but do you guys think that maybe they thought PlayStation wasn't going to release until 2021, and that was their plan until that Wired Magazine article came out, and they're like, we can't let them get out of the gate first, and that's when they decide that's maybe why we haven't really... Because the the uh, uh, Xbox uh, no the E three following that article they didn't have anything on the Xbox a sense of except like a bunch of like random information that was like really generic. We bought this studio or yeah. or the Xbox is gonna be great. That's basically what they said about the next one. And then you know aside from getting like a really bad model like what it looks like recently, we really don't know too much information. So do you guys think that there's some like does that does that idea hold any water that maybe they weren't planning on releasing this I year think until that's PlayStation a fair, decided? I think that's a fair conspiracy kind of theory. Where it is a conspiracy theory? Yeah, yeah. But, I don't really follow much of like I don't really believe much of that. I feel like you know they they had a presence at E three for X for the Scarlet. They had you know they brought the system itself out before Sony. I feel like it's kind of all been pointing in this direction for kind of a long time. Scarlet. Who's to know? You mean the Xbox One X? What yeah. That became. No, sorry, the new whatever. What, what do they call it in the at E3? They had a different. different oh, I'm sorry. It. Xbox One X was Scorpion. Scorp- Scorpio. So no, what, yeah. Scarlet so this was, was Scarlet, Scarlet right? Yeah. yeah. They had it at E3, like physically. No, not the system, but they had like a you know he went over a few little bullet points and came up and said, hey, we're working on it, and kind of like announced a few features on it, um, like on the E3 stage, and then they have that console that you know they released at the Game Awards. So I mean, I, it could be possible. I'm sure they were trying to figure out when Sony was going to release theirs, but I feel like all, all the, all the, uh, all, everything kind of pointed to the winner, you know, at the end of this year. Um, I'm just kind of surprised because what this means is like, like I didn't even know Halo Infinite was going to be backwards, like on both systems. So that's going to be on both systems. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What? Halo huh? Infinite's going to be on Xbox One. So you don't have, to, I don't, we don't have to buy an Xbox and a new Xbox Series it's X. It's going to be play on it. Xbox One and. And Xbox One Series X, Xbox. the new one. Oh, okay. Well, you said, I thought you meant like it was going to be on PlayStation or something. I mean, what? No, no, but it, it just makes me think like, obviously, they're not going to be able to use all of the bells and whistles in these new systems if they have to kind of, you know, build it towards the lowest common denominator of this like a, a, a OG 2013 Xbox One. Why wouldn't they use Halo as a catalyst for the next Xbox? Yeah, you would really unless change that. they weren't originally planning on releasing it on the new system, <laughs> and they weren't planning on releasing a new system. Well, this maybe year. the game they've been working on for a, a long time. So I do that's think true. that that was something that they kind of switched midway to. Hey, we're gonna that, make this that's a launch probably game. very true. But, but they're saying true. like all their first party games for the first year or two will be compatible with like. Uh, will will not be for that system alone. Presumably, that means they'll be on Xbox One as well, which means like they, you know, with these new powerful systems, it's not only going to be graphic power. It's going to be like how many enemies can you have on a screen? How intelligent is the AI? You're going to have to cut that back for even your new si- system to kind of be able to play on these older thing, older Xbox Ones. Like not even the X, but the just the base Xbox One S. Well, there's games. already current gen games coming out for the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One that are chugging on them now, let alone something that's not even made mm. for this generation. Yeah, but um oh god, what was I? I'm well, sorry, if, Dan. If I keep like <laughs> pseudo interrupting you, and then you like you completely lose well, your train you, of thought. If you remember those like Assassin's Creeds and those kind of cross generation games they had before, they looked better on the newer system, but it wasn't like this drastic like oh my god, this is the next generation. And that just felt want. like an HD version and, of the yeah, other game. And that's what you want if you buy a five hundred dollars system. You're you're you've you've bought in. You're getting it on the first day. You want it to push like you want it to push all the boundaries. You want it to do stuff that your PS4, or your Xbox One X couldn't do in like a million years but that's not going to be possible unless you buy like a PlayStation 5 which is confirmed that they're going to have exclusive games. So what what I was thinking is I think Microsoft downplayed the importance of exclusives this generation and I think they they 
I think they kept trying to push yeah, it. That's a huge understatement, too. Yeah. So <laughs> what I, what I think happened was I think they were like, nope, nope, FIFA and all that. We'll we'll it'll still sell you know really well on our console. We'll we'll be you know right with them because I mean again you said they were the Xbox 360 was king for a long long a, a long right time up until the, right up until Connect became their focus. Yeah. So at that point, then they were like, oh crap! All right, we need to focus on the next system so they focus on the next system but then they're so focused on hey you know we're xbox you know we have gears of war we have halo that's it you know we'll focus on that and then they realize oh that's not enough to carry the entire generation and we're not nintendo we can't just bank off like a like different mario games so i i think with purchasing all these small companies like ninja theory and and all these other smaller developers was, i think it they, was like 20 to 30 developers they bought right well, they bought a lot yeah right? so but i i just a lot i just recall a lot of them were kind of smaller they weren't known for you know huge games like yeah I mean, so still they make good games but you know i just AAA and i'm wondering if they're trying to pump enough money into them that they become triple a and become like the hey every every three years we're gonna have a Ninja Theory like exclusive game or something like that, and that would now I'm starting to think that would make sense that because I feel like I heard about these like purchases of these companies probably a year. It's been a couple years now. A year or two, well, yeah. But if you think about it, to make a full fledged yeah, you it know, takes a while. Three, yeah. Well, not only that, they got to sit down. Whatever they're doing, they have to finish whatever product they're doing. Then, you know, with the merger, that's when they have to sit down with Microsoft and be like, all right, this yeah. is what we want you to make. But you th you think that Xbox should have been thinking about this for six years now because it's been like the console's been out for that long and over over six years now. And the, the exclusive problem has been an issue the entire time. Yeah. No, I'm also shocked, too, is because it's not like they have like with PlayStation 4 where they still have like some, you know, some loaded in the gun here, ready to go. You know, they they like... Last of Us Two, Ghost of Tsushima. So oh they my still. Oh God, I forgot. PlayStation Four still has a crap ton of exclusives. Yeah, there, doesn't uh, it? exactly. So the, it, the remake of FF Seven is PS Four exclusive. For time, a year. Timed, yes. I think. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but I'm what I'm thinking is that I'm I'm actually surprised that with that they they wouldn't be postponing some of these games to the new system. They don't even have any games to postpone. Like oh, Forza. <laughs> nine like yeah like I, I, they just this this is going deeper down the rabbit hole but uh, do, do you think when they turned the corner from the 360 the, to the x-bone they they pretty much put all of their eggs in the connect and putting your cable box into the system are going to be the future do you think that was kind of the the point of no return and they've been kind of doing damage control ever since i mean they were doing damage control throughout this entire generation but i thought they were setting themselves up in the background yeah. with phil spencer seemed like a smart guy that knew what he was doing with like putting yeah, everything in yeah, order yeah. buying these big developers but to me you know if you had asked me last year i'd been like oh my god xbox is going to make me want to buy a two a second system in the same year the day it comes out but if you ask me now, like, I, I have no intention of buying the system. Yeah. I have an Xbox One. Like, what is the what is the sales pitch for why either of the three of us should buy the system? Yeah. We have an Xbox One. We can play all the PS5 uh, exclusives. We can play all the cross-platform exclusives on the PS5. If there's, like, one or two really good Microsoft games, we can play it on Xbox One. Maybe it won't look as good, but we're not going to pay an extra $600 just to play one or two good games. So we're not going to – we're going to at least wait a year or two. Yeah. And then the, yeah. the price will go down a little, and maybe they'll have a catalog that'll yeah. um, make that worth doing. But yeah. do you think it'll be too little, too late if no, they smash it out of the park in their second year? I don't I think so. I don't I mean, think so. Look at what the the, the uh, switch. I two separate answers. <laughs> oh, say so I don't think so because I mean, yes, I know uh, Nintendo's that, different. Yeah, but, but I know Nintendo you yes. compete. <laughs> um, Dan, but, I wish I videotaped what you just did yeah, for the I, listeners because I, I don't they, think the noise that they heard did it justice to what <laughs> I was seeing. <laughs> This gestication flamboyantly of your neck in and out towards well, I, the microphone. Can I tell you why and Dan, DJ, our DJ friend over here is wrong? DJ party in the house! Uh, I, think, I think some of these people underestimate how important just like the social, um, the social aspect of gaming is, how much it is to have early adopters. Like people, you know, people like us that are going to get these systems and we're going to be telling our friends that are kind of maybe a little less into video games, hey, get a PS5, we can play this game together. This game is so cool, my PS5... Why don't you check it out? We're not going to be telling them about the Xbox One X, you know, game that came out because we won't have it. 
It's just people like that that are kind of in the forefront of these video games that are going to be telling their friends that are a little bit behind, and then they'll be telling their friends that are a little bit more casual. And it just kind of builds from that. Like, if one of the reasons I like PS5 is all my friends lists are full when I go in there. When I play on when I go on Xbox, like I have a bunch <laughs> of people that haven't. Too. Yeah, when I play on Xbox One, people like haven't been signed on for eight years. It's like super depressing. <laughs> that is actually what I see on Xbox <laughs> yeah, too. Like true. now, these are friends that I made like six years ago, but like yeah. most of them are not yeah. on. Yeah, there, I mean, there's so much we could say here about it's like a domino effect. I, I mean, I, we can all agree that. I mean, this isn't good for Xbox. We can all agree on that. No, it's it's not good. But I mean, they, there is promise with all those those people that or, or developers that they they purchased. You know that there's going to be good ones. Well, down that's the, the look problem. at PlayStation. We, 3. we don't even know. We don't even know really anything that's been announced through those developers. We don't have like a roadmap. No, but, we we haven't seen anything. We don't know anything. For all we know, like it could just be a bunch of like, you know, malware. Well. <laughs> crap games coming on the Xbox Live that no one's going to want to play. It could be, but I, I feel like, I mean... I don't think that's The first true, game but... that they revealed was probably a game that a lot of people have never even played or never even heard of. Hellblade? That, that's what I'm saying. So, I think with that... I shrugged. There was no audio to it, Yeah, but he, I shrugged. he shrugged and it gave me a look. But a lot of... And I think that was a sign to fans of, like... The, the hardcore fans that they are focusing more on story based you know games and 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 more like games that gamers like like really hardcore people like than you know a Call of Duty because I feel like this system has been there they tried to push everything to digital and multiplayer you know Cuphead was only a, a digital release. Um, uh, player unknown battleground was only a digital release they 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 and a lot of their games were multiplayer focused um What's you know the choices of the developers or of them though well all their first i feel like all their first party look at sea of thieves it was multiplayer only exclusive sea of thieves was multiplayer only yeah oh, you can't play it by your, was like a, i mean you could play it by yourself but i mean it usually takes four people to run a ship uh, i thought it was like an action adventure I thought no, it, it, no it, it looked kind of like prince of persia but just on ships that's the feel nope, i was getting it was no it was, it, it, it was also very generic and i got a lot of bad reviews initially they've done a lot of work but also they have the the funding of a you know triple a rare company behind them I maybe I, I or don't know what's left of rare. rare. It yeah, could be, to but... me, this is just a bad look for Xbox because if you think about it, when the 360 and PS3 came out, the PS3 took a huge hit right away. Now they, they already had a huge market share from the PS2, obviously the best selling console of all time for now. They, they, they trailed out of the gate. They lost a lot of that market share to Xbox. And then it kind of it switched. They, they were able to catch up at the end. I think they were able to catch up a little bit, too, because of free online. Well, that was the last free one. Free online for a while until that hack happened. And then that's when they're like, no more free online. Because, you know, Sony, inter- really? Sony Online went offline for like a month and a half. Yeah, I remember that. It was, was like near hack. Christmas. But I, I don't think I don't it was. I don't paying for multiplayer on PlayStation 3 ever. I could be wrong, but I can't remember if they decided to initiate it. I'm pretty sure they initiated it then. Um, okay. If anybody um hasn't seen a uh, documentary on YouTube, it's called I don't think it's supposed to be on YouTube, but it's called Console Wars. Um it's about the the Xbox 360 versus the PS3. I you know, check it out. It's, it's really good. It's only about like 35 minutes long, but you know, PlayStation was able to catch up towards the end. It's been a different situation here. Yeah. Xbox even though the Xbox One, I even I will say, has gotten slightly better from where they started on, you know, back in 2013, they haven't gained that much traction, and I feel like this is going to lose them even more of that market share that they barely have now, anyways. So even if they were to pull a PS3 and kind of like kick it back into gear halfway through this generation, I think it might be too little, too late. That like they they would need to like obliterate PlayStation in the second year. They would need to completely. Like exclusive after exclusive after exclusive, and really offer something. Otherwise, there, there's really no hope of them overtaking the the console race. You know, yeah. No, no, Nintendo's a different. Nintendo's an outlier. <laughs> yeah, people own both either a PlayStation or an Xbox as well as a Switch. Like the the, the Nintendo's the outlier. It always has. It been. really. I mean, it is unique. It really. I mean, you go around an airport or whatever. You, you some public place, you always see one. Yeah. 
Um, so and it's kids just can play their Fortnite on it now at the airports. Yuck. What were you going to say, Matt? Matt? Yeah, I just want to kind of push back on the kind of internet consensus that I've seen this week ever since this story announced. Like, a lot of people have been saying, hey, this is like really consumer friendly. You don't have to spend all this money on a new system, um, which to me just sounds like really missing the point. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. I'm sorry. So people are generally saying that they're happy because now they don't have to worry about buying two systems no they're, yeah, they're saying like it's a good idea it's a that they're friendly because it's not cutting off people saying they have to you know these if they buy an xbox one they can still use it for a bunch of years they'll, they'll keep developing games which is true but also like you know they, they've made a bunch of xbox one games for those players they're continuing to make xbox one games for those players oh it's consumer friendly to the people who already have an xbox to consumers that can one. make the decision when they want yeah. about if they want to upgrade or not but to me it, it feels like you know the people that are most loyal the people that are buying it on day one they're kind of saying to them, like, we value you less than the other people, so we're going to make a less... Also, was uh, it going to be gonna backwards compatible anyways? Game. It is. It is. It it's going to be fully... Compatible. That is the one great thing that the um, uh, the Xbox Series X... It, I mean, I'm going to get one at some point. It, it is a definite at that is point. That, is that really the name they're sticking with? or is The it, Series X? I, well, I presumably, think, they're going to make a bunch of different upgraded consoles over the years, so maybe they'll make even more than one or two like they did this season. I'm so confused with so, everything they're doing. I, mean, I just, I, I don't, don't get it. I literally I, think I the guy, any of their the guy that came with the, the name 360 knocked it out of the park, but also stabbed them right in the ass because he gave them such a cool name, but he didn't. Like, where do you go from there? Like, what 360. Do you mean? Just name it something else. You don't have to name it the Xbox One. Just name it. Xbox well, the, Revolution. Well, that's what I'm saying. The, he did that, but then the the next one 